Today you'll learn about Bohr's model, and in particular, line spectra, atomic emission spectra, and why electrons closest to the nucleus are the most stable. Bohr's model of the atom is a key concept in early quantum physics and provides a fundamental explanation for the line spectra, an emission spectrum consisting of separate isolated colored lines observed in the emissions of light from excited gases. Niels Bohr proposes model to explain how electrons can have stable orbits around the nucleus without radiating energy, contrary to what classical physics suggested. He introduced several postulates. 1. Electrons orbit the nucleus in certain allowed orbits or levels without emitting radiation. 2. The energy difference between these orbits or levels is quantized, meaning electrons can only gain or lose energy in specific amounts when transitioning amongst these levels. 3. Electrons emit or absorb energy when they jump from one level to another. This energy exchange occurs in the form of discrete packets of light called photons, which have the energy E equals H times nu. Via these three postulates and using classical equations, Bohr was able to calculate the energies corresponding to these orbits or levels via his equation E equals negative HCRH times 1 divided by N squared, where H equals Planck's constant, C equals the speed of light, RH is the Rydberg's constant, which is 10,973,731.6 per meter, and N equals the principal quantum number, which is the energy level of an electron in an atom and relates to the whole number values of 1, 2, 3, etc. This equation simplifies to E equals negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18th joules times 1 divided by N squared. This equation ultimately led to our understanding that electrons are most stable in their lowest level, closest to the nucleus. Bohr achieved this via the following rationale. Each allowed orbit in an atom corresponds to an integer value of n, with the orbit's radius increasing with n. Therefore, the orbit closest to the nucleus is designated as n equals 1, the next closest is n equals 2, and so on. An electron within the atom can occupy any of these orbits, and due to the equation, the electron's energy in each orbit is negative. As n, the principal quantum slash orbit number increases, the energy becomes less negative and therefore more positive, thereby making the electron more unstable. This situation is analogous to stories in a building where the bottom floor is where n equals 1, and as you move up floors, n increases to 2, 3, etc. Just like in a building, the higher you go up, the more energy you have. Due to this, science came up with the term ground state for electrons on the lowest level and the atom's most stable state. States with n greater than or equal to 2 are considered excited states, indicating a higher energy levels. Now let's get to Bohr's model explanation of line spectra. When electrons are excited by absorbing energy, they jump to higher energy levels. As they return to lower energy levels, they emit photons, and this is called atomic emission spectra or fluorescence. The energy of these photons corresponds to the difference in orbit levels involved in the transition. Because the energy levels in atoms are quantized, the photons emitted during transitions have specific energies. This results in the emission of light at specific wavelengths, producing a series of discrete lines known as the atomic emission spectrum or line spectra. Each element has a unique line spectrum serving as a fingerprint for identifying atomic substances. However, there are some key limitations to Bohr's model. First, it only accurately explains the line spectra of the hydrogen atom, with the explanation of other atoms not fitting so well. Second, it doesn't explain why the negatively charged electrons don't crash into the positively charged nucleus. Lastly, it describes electrons as particle-like and leaves out their wave-like nature. In summary, Bohr's model was an important step in the development of a comprehensive model of an atom. Its most significant contributions were that electrons only exist in quantized energy levels within the atom, and the transitions between these levels result in the emission or absorption of light with specific wavelengths and energy. This was a major step forward in understanding atomic structure and the origins of spectral lines laying the groundwork for quantum mechanics. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope these explanations help. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask, and if you found value in this video, please like it and let people know about the channel, because it really does help spread the knowledge. Based on what you learned, think about the following questions. What happens when an electron transitions from a high energy level to a lower energy level? How does the energy of an electron compare in the n equals 3 level to the n equals 1 level? You observe an emission line at 486 nanometers from a hydrogen gas discharge tube. Using the equation for energy of a photon, E equals HV, C equals lambda nu, and the Bohr's model, determine which transition, i.e. from which n level to which n level, the electron made to emit this photon. 
you can find the energy level difference by E equals negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18th joules times 1 divided by n squared final minus 1 divided by n squared initial. They emit photons, and the energy of these photons correspond to the difference in energy levels involved in the transitions. Plugging 3 and 1 into the equation of E equals negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18th joules times 1 divided by n squared for n, you can see that with n equals 3, the energy is 9 times closer to 0, meaning that nine, it is 9 times larger and 9 times more unstable. Given 486 nanometers equals 486 times 10 to the negative 9 meters, you can plug that into lambda and C equals lambda nu and get the frequency nu, which is 6.17 times 10 to the 14th per second. Plugging that into E equals H nu, we get E equals 4 times 0, 9 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Plugging that into the Bohr's model equation, we get E equals 4.09 times 10 to the negative 19th joules equals negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18th joules times 1 divided by n squared final minus 1 divided by n squared initial. Doing some algebra, we get negative 0.188 equals 1 divided by n squared final minus 1 divided by n squared initial. And plugging in various integers, we find the transition between n equals 4 to n equals 2. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time learning and bettering yourself. If you like the video and want to learn more, donate, or get tutoring, please check out my website, nocollegeneeded.org. You can use the code NCN for 20% off tutoring and any supplemental materials. If the subject isn't up yet, please be patient. I'm working on bringing them up as soon as I can.